Most West End productions I've ever worked on have needed some sort of custom gobo that's been made um, or custom gobo wheels, custom colour wheel modes. Uh, in fact, actually, when I worked on Miss Saigon, we did the pre visualisation for that with Bruno Poet. While I was waiting for them to do the focus, uh, Bruno just gave me some artwork and said, James, can you design me a gobo to put into WYSIWYG? And I designed it in Photoshop, and that was actually the artwork that was used to make the gobos. So, you know, sometimes those, those hours sitting there waiting to to wait for the programmer to focus. They can be well used uh, for other things. So um, we're gonna talk you through how to load up a custom gobo. We're gonna load it into a gobo wheel. We're gonna build a custom color wheel and we're gonna learn how to build up a color scroller as well. Lesson 28, and we're gonna build a custom gobo. Um, I'm going to use for my custom gobo, my old uh, logo, which you'll see on my James Simpson 3D Facebook page. Uh, I'm rebranding at the moment, so I'll have a new logo soon, which is uh, in in development. So I would love to have used that, but it's not ready in time. Uh, so we're going to start by going up to our ooh, is it libraries? Libraries, Gobo Wizard, um, and we can load this up. Now the most amusing custom Gobo I've ever had was a Nazi swastika for um, Springtime for Hitler in the producers had a few questions asked by the Gobo Manufacturing Company. They wanted to make sure that I was making something that was um, appropriate and it wasn't for some misaligned use. So I've just named the Gobo uh, logo. It's going to be confusing. Gobo called logo. Uh, and it's going to be in the custom folder and it only sent a path for this. So I'm going to call it custom logo. The reason for this is that later on it will actually add a, uh, a new directory to your Gobo library and you'll find it later. So that's my new logo, my, my library for my new logo in there. I could just call it James or uh, yeah, name of the production, JCS or something, but yeah, that just works as well. Make this item available to all other documents. I'd leave that on because you never know, you may be you know, starting a new project and the designer may ask you to use that Gobo again and you have it available then. Click next. Now I need to specify the file. So I'm gonna go and select this from my Pictures folder. Uh, I'm going to grey this out. Logo 500. So there we go. That's the, kind of the middle of it. It's automatically cut around the edge because uh, of the size. Basically, it has to be 500 by 500 wide uh, and height. Um, everything needs to be square. That's actually the point I'm trying to make. Sorry, is that this image is HD because it was being used on a mobile phone screen. Um, but if you think about it in terms of like an app, the your image needs to be completely square. Uh, ideally, if you've got the uh, the blacked edge already, it will help because you'll see you'll see if you've gone into it or not. Uh, my image, if I load it up and drag it across, oh, it's opened in Paint. It's a full HD image. It's got a little bit of text at the bottom that I've just cut off. Um, so it's n that's never going to be a gobo size. It needs to make a square from from the middle of it. So it needs to be sort of like that. So. This is what it's done, it's cut out the middle. That's fine for now, I'll demonstrate the point. So it's gonna be saved into this location here. Oh no, so that's where it came from. Uh, custom Gobo is required an association with an existing Gobo in order to be visible in wireframe views. So when I select a fixture in the CAD view, you probably notice that it creates a beam. When you put a Gobo in, it will create a, a beam with the shape of that texture. Um, what it's asking for you here is to find something that's similar to the shape of your gobo so that it can create that wireframe mesh. Now this doesn't affect at all what's in the live mode when you're visualizing it. It's it's always going to be exactly what's in your in your actual gobo image there. But this is just for when you're working, you can see how it looks in wireframe mode. So it may never be relevant to you, but it's always just good practice to try and find something similar. So I've got kind of two circles in mine. Um, so I'm going to start with that. See if I can find couple of circles that's sort of that's sort of similar but it's also nowhere near um, you know you could be here all day trying to find something that's similar and it has to be something from their library you can't um, you can't make something yourself I'm just really guessing here and it just needs to be close enough Obviously, colours are going to be a bit of a pain. We don't want that. So it could do that. That might do. Offset circles. All right, obviously, it's nothing like my image, but you'll see what it does when we load it up. 
Uh, hmm, maybe one of those. They're kind of similar. What I was really looking for was two circles next to each other, but I can't find one. So I'm going to go with my, where was it, offset circles. I've gone past them. Oh. Yeah, I'll go for that one. Right, so it hasn't done anything uh, just yet. But if I go into my sort of tool set down here, where I've got my, my quick toolbar, I can add colors and gobos. So I can add a new gobo. And you can do this in the accessories tool as well. But if I go into gobos here, I can go down to, well, in fact, actually I have to go to home. So I've got gobos and then I've got custom gobos. If I click on custom, you'll see my logo one there. So there's another menu here. It's also called logo. Either way, there's my logo. So I can click insert. It's added it to my list here. I can then assign that to a light. So I'm going to assign that to this source for just so we can see it. There we go. Now if I click on this light, you'll see, ooh, it's pointing right over. Ah, right, I need to turn on my, my scenery so it's got something to point onto. Yeah, not looking very obvious there. Let's go into the isometrics view and point it at the stage. There we go. So this this line that's coming out of it, that is effectively what we're just trying to trying to define with the uh, with that with choosing that go but you see it doesn't really make a difference it's not that important um, or is it because I've got the wrong yeah I've selected the wrong light that's why so there you go so you can see what it's doing it's not it's not that essential that the line is correct you can see the difference between a normal beam it's just got those lines and the one that's got all the uh, the gobo information in it I'll flip back to the standard mode you can see the difference there there's one there's the other um, with the gobo in but if I go to quad mode, we're going to look at it in shaded view. And because it's inverted the wrong way around, it's, it's, it's black and a white gobo rather than white on a black, which is what you'd normally expect. So that's, that's a beam pointing at the stage. So it's only a meter off the stage, so it's hard to see. And then that's my gobo. Ooh. Point it over here. So it looks like a beam. Let's try and zoom in on it. See, oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Just gonna point it over like that. Zoom in. You can just see. There you go. Just want to get round. There's my logo. Also, look better if it was a bit higher up. But that's the logo loaded in to my gobo. So that's how you make a custom gobo. If we go back into library, you can see edit color gobo lists. So I'm going to change my gobos in one of my Mac 500s. So I can add a new gobo list, I can make a list, I can choose a number of slots, so I can say it's going to have six slots, so I'm going to call it test, okay, and it's given me all of these open slots, and in those slots I can insert a colour, a gobo or a prism, so I can go into gobo, got my custom logo there, load it up, and that's gone to slot A. Um, I would check um, how the gobos are actually working, like some of the manual just assumes that there's an open um, in fact, usually either slot one or slot six might be you open. You might not be clear which, uh, and you might end up being offset by one the whole way through. Um, so make sure you know which slot in WYSIWYG is open versus which slot in the real light. And uh, usually the best way to check that is to get a natural light and to test it. Uh, it may mean having to have half a day at a higher company. Then um, I don't know a single company that wouldn't let you come in and with a desk and just just flash out a light with a WYSIWYG on a laptop just to check. But it's it's better to do it then than to make a mistake and have to reprogram loads of stuff. So that's essentially what you do to make a custom gobo. So this is how I'd build a scroller um, string. I'd you know, create a scroller. So I know that my scroller has 16 frames. Um, and then I'll just go through and insert the colours just one at a time. So they're all Roscoe colours. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but ooh, where are we? Roscoe Lux. Let's get a bit of bastard amber, select, and the next one, another colour, light red. Yeah, I can't remember what they actually are, but once you've built it, um, that's all you need to do, just close it down. But what I want to do, I want to make a Mac 500 um, Gobo wheel, and it's actually really convenient to start with one that is already built. So, if you go to stock, instead of custom, you'll see a list of all the Gobo wheels that have already been made. 
and, and not just gopals, color wheels as well. So everything that's in the library currently. So if I type in Mac 500, there we go. I've got a Mac 500 Gobo. I've got Mac 500 colors, one, it's got two wheels. And it's got a second one, I wonder why it's, oh, and then there's the, yes, yeah, so there's two Gobo wheels and the NT version of the Gobo wheels. I'm just not sure what the difference is between these Gobo wheels. I didn't think it had two Gobo wheels. Yes, of course it does. Of course it does. It has one that rotates and one that doesn't. So what I can do is while I've got this selected, let's say I'll take my static Gobo wheel and I want to change one of these to my, logo. actually no, I'm going to change one of my rotating Gobo wheels because I want to be able to make it line up. I'm going to hit clone. What I'm going to clone it as, Mac 500, Gobos, I'm just going to underscore JCS for this production. Click OK. It's now going to be in both the custom and the stock folder. So if I go to, to custom, you'll see it there. See, it's automatically told us which one is the open one. So that's something we don't have to worry about. It's worrying about where we need to leave our open uh, slot. What am I not going to use? Triangles, bars, fans, thin bars, or grid ball. I'm going to get rid of the grid ball. I've never used that one before. So I'm going to hit remove to make it a free slot. And now I can go insert Gobo. You know, I could I could go just through the whole library here. You know, I could go to the DHA library, find those breakup, um, undulation, insert one of those if I wanted to. But I don't. I'm going to go with my custom logo. Click select. And there we are. So now it's now loaded into slot six of my special custom Gobo. Close that. So now that I've built that, I'm going to choose my Mac 500s. I'm going to, I could select one individually, but I'm actually going to select all of them. I'll just turn off my sets because it's going in the way again. Uh, you can see why I built those into groups. Much easier to work without it. So select fixtures by type, select Mac 500s, right click properties, and you can see it all down there, all turning on, so we know we've got them. And if we go to the Gobo loads, oh, we've got two Gobo wheels. One of them's got the, the little arrows around it. That denotes that it's a moving Gobo. That's a static Gobo. And it won't let us add that Gobo we've made to the static Gobos because it, it's not compatible. It doesn't have the right number of slots. If we go into our custom Gobo, you see we've got two options. I've got my test that I made. I just happened to have the same number of slots. Didn't plan for that, but it had six slots, so we could add that. And we've got my custom version that I've named. So do that, click OK, and there we go, we've loaded up a custom Gobo. So what I'll tend to do is to go in and, and build all my Gobo wheels um, before you know I start assigning all the all the modes and everything to my light. I'd go through and do that in one go. It's just best to, to section projects off. So you say, right, well, I'm going to patch everything first, then I'm going to do all the modes, and then I'm going to assign all the Gobo wheels. So I get all my Gobo information from Lightrite, uh, usually, if that's what the, the company's using. Uh, they will they'll give me uh, five or six different sheets that have different types of Gobo wheels in it and I uh, I go through and just clone them and, and rebuild them each time. So there you go, that is custom Gobo wheels. Uh, as for scrollers, if I click on the scroller, I click properties, this may not work because I may have got the wrong number of frames. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 16. If I click on Chrome, Chrome Cube Broadway, go to scroller, also scroll, click on here and there we go. Of course, yeah, you can choose how many scrolls you want. So change that to scroller, click OK. Um, and then the desk will do the rest. If you put 16 frames in the desk, it will just jump this forward by uh, a colour at a time. So there you go. That is how you build custom Gobos, build custom Gobo wheels and colour wheels and scrollers and insert them in your fixtures. Hope it's useful.